thanks for dropping by at, at Can't Let Her Die DIY. If you found this channel, you probably uh, have a Chevy Colorado or a GMC Canyon like I do. This is a 2005 Chevy Colorado. It's old, 15 years. Has over 400,000 kilometers on it. Uh, it's been a great truck, but actually right now it's not working all that well. It runs great, uh, but I am getting some burning of blue smoke, some smoke of the exhaust on startup. And it's strange, it's, uh, it's a little different. I, I still have good power and everything, so I don't think it's uh, oil getting past the rings. And it doesn't happen all the time. It only happens after I've taken it on a harder run, like on the highway at, at high speeds, gone on longer trips. Then the next, after it sits for a while, when I start it up, there'll be a ton of blue smoke or white smoke, like blue smoke or white smoke, a little bit of both. So, but if I drove sh drive short trips, nothing. I can start up, no smoke at all. Works great. So what I think is going on is that uh, the PCV valve is internally, it's inside the valve cover. It's underneath the valve cover. So you can't really change it. You have to change the valve cover, which is a huge job on uh, in this truck. you got to take a lot of parts up, off. The same parts that I had to take off for the uh, fuel injector replacement. I have a video on that by the way, it shows you how to do it, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm hoping it's a plugged uh, PCV valve or PCV orif uh, orifice that's that's in the valve cover, so um, and it's going to cost, if you got the dealer to do it, it would be a thousand dollars to get to the valve cover, just in labor, so you're looking at almost two thousand dollars of a job to do that. So, uh, but you can do it yourself because it's nothing but taking off bolts, putting bolts back on. I can do it. I'm definitely doing it because i got to figure out what's going on. And uh, this might be your problem too. So, uh, come on, Hedrick. Come on, say hi. Here. Here. Anyway, uh, we're going to get this done. So why don't you go back, throw in some old clothes. Hedrick's going to join us too. We're going to get there. And we're going to tear this valve cover off and see what's going on underneath. Do some cleaning of the valve cover, cleaning of the PCV valve, and uh, we're going to have some fun. So throw on your old clothes. We'll meet you back here in five minutes. We'll get under that, underneath that hood, and we'll get this done, because you got this. You do. Okay, so here's the mission if you decide to accept it. We're replacing the valve cover on this... Uh, Chevy Colorado, 2005 Chevy Colorado. We believe the PCV valve, internal valve underneath the valve cover is plugged due to the oils not draining very well underneath the valve cover. So to replace the valve cover we're gonna have to remove a lot of parts. Now I have another video where I went in and I replaced fuel injectors. So if you want to search for fuel injector replacement at Can't Let Her Die DIY, you'll see step-by-step -step process that uh, I went through to get to the valve cover. But uh, so you'll see where all the screws are, and it's pretty good, but it's a long video, so I'll put the link of that on this video. But uh, I'll just tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have to remove uh, a lot of the parts to get to the valve cover. So first thing we're going to do is... Uh, Got a pointer here to disconnect this uh, the battery terminals. Disconnect negative first, then the positive. Remove this case. Remove the there's a clamp holding the battery down down here. We're going to remove that and pull the battery right out. Get rid of the battery. Get it out of our way because we need that the room to get in at this intake manifold. We have to remove the intake manifold. We have to remove the throttle body. We have to remove the fresh air intake resonator. We need to remove this fresh intake hose, that hose. And to get to one of the bolts on this 
in Jake Manifold, we're going to have to loosen up the, the alternator and just pull it back a little bit so that we can access one of the bolts here. So I've done this before uh, on a fuel injector job. Um, it's time consuming, but it's not difficult. You, you can do this. It's not hard. It's just for removing bolts. Um, and besides, you got me, and I can show you exactly where they are. That's the hardest thing. To get to these, the bolts on this, where it's easier, I've learned, to go in under, remove the tire, jack up the truck, remove the tire, remove the splash guard on this tire right here, and go up underneath here on an angle with an extension, a foot and a half extension, remove these bolts. Like I said, I got a video that shows you exactly how to do all this stuff, so I'm not going to redo that video, but I'll, uh, I'll show you what it looks like when I get these parts off, and we'll just go from there there until we get to the valve cover, and then and then it gets really exciting at the valve cover. So we'll pop that baby off and see what it looks like on the under, underside, see if it's clogged or not. Maybe I've done all this for nothing. Let's, uh, but I got a good feeling she's plugged the PCV because it is uh, smoking on startup. So, uh, so it's just waiting around. Let's get her done. Let's get her done. Let's do this. And you got this. You got it. I got it. We can all do this and save a lot of money. Let's go. So now you can see the valve cover it is right here. This valve cover is all the way down there. That's your intake resonator box is hooked up to that. Uh, and these are your inline five cylinders. These are your uh, spark plugs are underneath these. These are the coils. One, one two, three, four, five. That's the intake, uh, that's the uh, valve cover that we've got to get off. So we're going to remove the throttle body and this intake manifold, all these coils, the plugs, the connections, um, so that we can get at the bolts all the way around the valve cover. At this point, it's a good time to remove the battery in case so that we can get at, get at some of the bolts underneath this and the, at the alternator, um, so we'll do that. Moving the throttle body, 10 millimeter bolt, four of them. Next step is get this uh, this uh, intake manifold off, and this is the most challenging part. It's not, 
you know, it's just hard to find the bolts. But like I said, my other video go, takes you bolt by bolt how to remove this. So I've done it a couple of times, uh, and I've learned that uh, you can access every bolt except for one from underneath through the tire uh, splash guard a lot quicker, a lot easier. The most important thing I want to make sure you know is to uh, get this bracket off that holds this. These two fuel lines and the dipstick uh, right here. There should be four bolts that hold that on. You got to get that off, loosen it, pull it to the side so that you can see some of the bolts at the bottom of this intake manifold. Don't try to get that off without removing this bracket that holds this first. I've tried that. You'll waste hours trying to get those bolts. Uh, okay, just wanted to let you know that. Okay, you're going to have to jack up the vehicle, remove the tire. Right, the front driver's side tire, uh, the splash guard that's up in here, right? There's a rubber splash guard, his clips, remove that so that you can get in here with an extension. You can reach the bottom of the intake manifold. All the bolts down there, except for one, can be accessed this way. A lot easier. So that's what I'm going to do. Stay tuned. For the intake manifold, you're going to need a, a drive, a ratcheting drive. This is a 3 8 drive. This is a foot and a half extender. And what you're really going to need is one of these, these universal type sockets for going around turns, wobblies, or universal type. You definitely need that. The bolts are 10 millimeter bolts, which is kind of nice. A lot on Chev, a lot of them are 10, 10 millimeters, so, you, so that's kind of consistent theme throughout this whole video. But uh, you definitely will need this bad boy from here on out. That's one, many to go. Uh, the good thing about these is the bolts do not come all the way out. They kind of hang in there. So you just need to loosen them up. Uh, and they will not drop down. You won't lose your bolts. So that's kind of good. Thanks. Now there's two, two bolts that are hard to get at on the intake manifold. They're in the very back end of the intake manifold. Two on the side. And I'm on to one of them right now with that extension. I don't know if you can see that. That's the angle of, of attack you you need. You need to have the wobbly on there. And uh, I just hooked on to it. That's the bottom one. And then there's one just above it. You can only see half of it, but you can get your get that wobbly socket onto that and get it out with this the same type of attack. Same angle of attack. Right? Right up in there. Going in to get number six, just above number or number five, just above number six. We've got five easily right there. And now that we lifted up the bracket, I can see number six, which is tucked up there. So on this truck where it's a five cylinder, it's got a pattern of two, two bolts, then you come in about two inches, one, then come in about two inches, two, two bolts, one, two. That's the pattern, one, two, one, two, one, two. So, uh, on either side of the cylinders. So, I'm calling this one number five. It's a double one. So, we got six right away. It was the easiest one. Yeah, it was the easiest one when I said that. 
Well, there's one just above it that you can't even see until you get the uh, bracket pulled up and out of the way. And then you can get onto it quite easily. So I'll get that one now. I got all the ones in the back out in the middle. And now it's on this side underneath the alternator is the first one. So we're probably going to do that next. Okay, we'll have to re remove the bolts from the alternator. So the alternator is down, down in there. There's the alternator right there. And there's two bolts, 13 millimeter bolts on top, one there, one down in there, and there's one at the bottom of the alternator. So we're going to remove those and pull the alternator back a little bit. How are you doing? Are you hanging in there? I got uh, I got the alternator pulled back, loosened up the final bolt at the bottom, pulled the alternator back, was able to access that one that first bolt on the intake manifold, got that loosened up. Now the the whole intake manifold is loose, and that should be sufficient. Hopefully, I have it sufficiently loose that I can access the bolt on the uh, all the way around the valve cover on this side so unplug some connections this one here the that's the PCV intake uh, PC hose PCV hose there's one there and one there those two uh, that are the, the whole problems right underneath there we hope we believe and uh, now we have to uh, undo some connections get the wiring out of the way I'll get you in there. We'll unplug the connections on each of the coils. Coil number one here. And you just simply slide out the gray locking uh, plug like that. If you push the little button there, the gray button, the corner of your corner of your screwdriver. If you depress that, this gray locking uh, cap will snap out like that. And then if you press the black button, this whole thing should come out. Voila! Removing the 10 millimeter bolts on the coils. Removing the coils. There's one bolt per coil. Okay, it's getting exciting now. We're at the valve cover. We uh, have all double checked that all the connections are off. Uh, these two down here, this was a little tricky. There's a, if you stick a screwdriver in there, you're able to pull this this way. It's a little tab hooked on there. So get a little screwdriver in there and uh, go in like that, right? You can pull it this way. Same with this one over here. Same thing, stick a screwdriver in there, pull those plugs off so they're disconnected from the valve cover. Now we, uh, so all the connections are off. We're gonna lift this up. We're gonna slide this valve cover out from underneath this wiring harness. And uh, we're gonna go from there. Get you in there so you can see a little better. Those were the connections I was talking about two at the end there. So now we got like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, probably twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two bolts, ten millimeter bolts all around the the valve cover. We're gonna that's next to get those loosen those bolts up, remove them, and see if we can get this valve cover off. So far, so good.
bolts are removed, the valve cover should come up. I pried it a little bit in a safe spot. And just to break the seal, and now I'm starting to get some movement here. It's stuck down on that side a little bit, but we'll get it. She's coming. She's coming whether she wants to come or not. <laughs> A little gentle prying on this side. Are you still with me? We got uh, the the valve cover is loosened up, all the 10 millimeter bolts are all loose and I can move it but it catches on something. So if you look closely, uh, it's catching on this bolt that's coming off of the uh, pressure regulator, the gasoline pressure regulator that pressurizes the fuel rail right down in here. Uh, maybe I'll get a light for you. Right down in there. It's a T30 torque screw down in there. And that, the other end of that, is stopping the valve cover from being pulled up. So we have to loosen this bolt. And that's a surprise. So we'll loosen that. Like everything else, we're still removing things to be able to get this valve cover off. To get to the PCV, plug PCV valve. Or the oil that isn't draining properly away from the PCV valve. There. Now, that is loosened up. You see it right there? Yeah, it's completely loose now. And we should be able to lift that valve cover up. Hey, Hatcher. Looking for peanut butter? Took that connection off there. That should go up to give us a little more room. And this should slide right down. Is that going to do nothing? Get this up. And then, what's it catching on your side? It's still very tight there. Okay, there's a clip there. We'll get rid of that. We'll disconnect everything here. That will give us a lot of room. Oh, looks like there's a pulley or something here. Yeah? Yeah, it Under looks like it's attached. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's just the gasket. Oh, is it? It looks like it's pulling up. It looks like it's. Uh, yeah. It's, the gasket's holding it down. That's what was holding it. That's what it was. In, being held down internally by the gasket. Half of it's attached to the cover, half of it's attached to the motor. And you don't want to force anything because you don't want to break anything. So it's good to investigate what's going on. Can you flip that down? I don't want to lose any bolts either. Okay. Voila! The valve cover. Mission accomplished. Half of it. We're halfway. Can you see that? And what does it look like? I'll turn it upside down once I remove the bolts. I don't want to lose any. 
And there it is. Inside your engine. Get you in there a little closer. There's the camshafts. Timing belt. Timing belt guide. Timing belt looks nice and tight. Let's pull you up here. Shafts, the five sil five plugs, and there you have it. That is your engine. A fair bit of crud. But it does have over 400,000 kilometers on it. So, should be some crud. Let's go look at the valve cover. So if you look at the valve cover, the inside of the valve cover, you'll see that it's very, uh, it's black, it's dirty. It's, uh, it's carbon or, or, or burnt oil on the surface. And... Uh, so that PCV orifice that's under, right underneath here, uh, I'll show it to you. This PCV orifice in there, if you can look right down there, I'll get the light. Anyway, that looked like it was partially clogged with the same black stuff that's on the inside, so the carbon or burnt oil. So if I get my light here, maybe you can see that now I've, I've cleaned it out so it looks good now. Can you see down in there? Right down in there. See the hole inside there? Mm -hmm. Yep. That did not look like that when I first got it. I cleaned it and what I did was um, I used some sea foam and I cycled sea foam through it two or three different ways like this three or four times I'll just do it once more so that you can see so what I did was I, I poured sea foam down here and that is pouring way more it was barely coming out like it was only come, it was probably half as much as that and then I had a vacuum on here and so I was sucking it out and then so I was doing that trying to clean it out and then turning it upside down this way and I was putting sea foam down in here. You can pour sea foam in here like this. Just both ways. I kept doing that. And then putting uh, positive blowing air into this side. Basically I was doing that back and forth just to clean that out without being too obtrusive and then uh, I could see where it was partially coming clear just with the sea foam and all that and then if you take uh, if you take a 332 332nd size drill bit it's the exact size of that orifice down in there and it will fit all the way down in there and I can 
at first it didn't I can see that I have that totally cleared out now so maybe this is the way you want to clear that orifice out without taking this cover off you could just get a 3 30 second drill bit unhook the hose and uh, see if it's obstructed mine was obstructed and uh, now it's completely cleared I can tell by the way the sea foam is just draining right through it very easily this drill bit now just drops right down there See, there's no obstructions there so I think what was happening on mine a partial obstruction it wasn't completely obstructed I could blow air through it but it's very restrictive when I blew air through it and now it's uh, it's less restrictive and it's, so rather than modifying this uh, valve cover I'm assuming in GM knows what they were doing when they designed this I don't want like to drill holes make that a bigger orifice modify it in some way there's a reason why they wanted this size and this size only so I, you know I think just over 400,000 kilometers maybe I, 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 uh, I live close to work too so maybe it wasn't driven hard enough and, and carbon got built up a little bit there or burnt oil or so it's just getting an old engine but whatever the the cause I think uh, a good cleaning of that orifice is what is needed here and uh, you know it's easy to do without taking the valve cover off so I would if I was doing this all again I would just try to clean that out first and see if that's the problem see if that helps so anyway I guess it's time to put this back together I'm going to clean the rest of it inside and out and then uh, get her put back on the truck and uh, see what happens so hopefully that helped you out. You got this. 3.30 seconds. I guess 600 grit uh, wet sandpaper. I'm just going through here and cleaning up where this uh, gasket's going to lie and where this is going to go back on the engine. I just want it to not leak and be a nice clean surface so that's what you should do to put this back on so that there's a good seal of the gasket so you don't have to take this off again ever and this does a good job so at this point it's all about cleaning and making sure there's no debris, there's no dirt, there's no gunk, there's no gasket material all around here anywhere so that when we screw these down, and I'll do the same thing to the, on the motor side, the engine, so this cover can go down and, and it be a good seal that's not going to leak. Okay, we're going to take these gaskets off where the coils go around the spark plug. The coil goes down on there and the, and the uh, valve cover goes down on these gaskets right here. So I have new gaskets, so I'm removing these. And uh, I'm going to put new ones down, but first I'm going to, I have a shop vac. And I'm going to go all around here, get all the little, the dirt with the shop vac and then I'm going to clean it with a rag and then maybe take a little bit of sandpaper and just smooth it off in case there's any gasket material or anything down in there that may interfere with a good seal on the new gaskets going down so uh, this is one of those things where you just got to concentrate and clean it absolutely perfectly and you'll be rewarded with a, an engine that doesn't leak through the gaskets 
Uh, I just I just think one little piece of sediment. Uh, hopefully, one little one would mess you up, but uh, better to have none in there. So, gonna clean it. It's probably the worst part. Cleaning is always the worst part. Okay, I just spent a uh, considerable amount of time cleaning up all around the edge of the of the engine where the valve cover is going to sit down so that I have a good seal. This is so important, I just wanted to mention it. Um, I took 600 grit sandpaper and scraped off all evidence of the of the burnt oil or black uh, black mark where the old gasket used to be and uh, all around here as well these uh, where the uh, spark plugs are going to go the uh, coils very important um, you don't want to get this valve cover on having it leak because uh, you got an improper seal because it wasn't clean so nobody likes it kind of sucks but uh, yeah, there's nothing more important when it comes to these gasket jobs make sure that's clean so if we come over here Okay, the valve cover is being prepped to get go back on the engine. Uh, I've removed the old gasket. It's black. It goes all the way around the edge. And I removed the uh, gasket that goes around where the coils are in the center, the five of them, inline five cylinder. Five of these have been removed. I installed the other ones. Uh, the new ones right here. I put oil on both sides of them to put them in because they seal better if they have oil and make sure that the flat side of this, the wider side of this gasket is going to be pressing against the engine. So the narrow side, narrow side goes into the groove and the flatter part of it will be pressed against the uh, the the spark plug uh, holes. So that's now um, very important. It's a better seal if you get put some oil on these seals. So I've done done the middle ones there. Done those. So I got a little bit of oil on this. I just take my finger and I go down and press it and just leave a little bit of oil on this gasket so that when it presses down on the engine that's a liquid seal it uh, it sticks it will stick and seal a little bit better so I think that's important it also helps to clean let's so get that done on the gasket a lot of finny, finicky jobs a lot of little things but they're all very important because you don't want this to leak okay we got the valve cover slid underneath this harness I got some people to help me so I had six hands here three of us we lift up the harness and we slid it in here without trying not to touch anything with that gasket to get it in there didn't want to pick up any dirt on the gasket Got it hovering over and then laid it down softly, gently. There's no gasket uh, appearing. None of the gaskets look like they're out of, out of alignment, so everything looks good. Now we're, I'm tightening up the bolts. Uh, the pattern of tightening up these bolts is you start on the inside, you work your way outside. So I'm start, I started with this one. I went to the one in the very back. Now, now the third one is right here, and I'm just tightening them down until they're finger tight, like that. And now I'll go to this one here. So you start here, you, and you go like that, and then I'll go over here, and then the next one, and then there, and the next one. You know what I mean? All the way around from one side to the other so that this can get pressed down evenly and I'm just finger tighten it and then I'll go around and I'll tighten them to spec which is 89 inch 
inch-pounds, 89 inch-pounds of torque. Uh, that's what we're going to do to get this in there, get this in this in there right, and hopefully uh, we'll get this installed and then start putting it all back together. Okay, I've hand tightened the bolts, and now I'm going to torque them down the specs. 89 inch pounds works out. There's 12 inches in a pound. That works out to 7.4 foot pounds. I got this set on 7.4 foot pounds. I did the first one. Uh, it's not very tight, so don't over tighten these. And now I'm going in the same pattern. Uh, I'm going to do this one, the second one. This will be the second one. And uh, There's a real danger of over tightening these bolts. Oh, so it gets tight all of a sudden. And that's it, right there. That's not very tight. That's Okay, I got the uh, I got the coils in. I got the wiring harness all snapped in, all the connections. I went around, started, just went around carefully, right around the valve cover, reconnecting things. Starting with the the, the last ones I disconnected, or the first ones I put back on. Did all the connections. Did all the vacuum hoses. Um, put the throttle. I did that and then I went down and I tackled the intake manifold which is the most difficult one difficult part of it uh, this intake manifold got that back on I started with this bolt right here the one that's underneath the alternator got that in place and then I went down and did uh, there's two in the end and then there's the one that's I call number eight or seven. It's that's the hardest one. So I, I try to get that one while this bracket is still loose. Get that in there right away, the hardest one. And then this is in position. And you can and do all the other other remaining ones. So uh, got that on, got every bolt tightened, uh, about the same as what it was when I took it off. Um, Got that on, then I put the alternator back on, tighten that those three bolts up. Then I put the serpentine belt on. I needed a hand, extra hand to help get that on. Got that back in place. Um, that's great. Then I did the throttle body, got the throttle body on. I put some oil on that gasket. I did not change that gasket. Hopefully, I did not damage it. Uh, we'll see. That's the throttle body right there. Throttle body. And so things are looking good. I still have to. So I got, and then I put the bracket on, and that was easy. And now I just have to snap in some wiring, uh, the little clips on these wiring harnesses all through that I took off down, down by the tire, by the. The splash guard through the tire, I disconnected some of those wiring harnesses to get in there. And uh, so we're coming along here. It's uh, the motor starting to come back together. And uh, yes, it's been pretty good. So I'll get you back in here when I get the, the battery on. Is The next thing I'm going to get the battery in there and get the case on, get that connected. And the resin intake, the fresh air intake hose, the resonator, bo the box, fresh air intake box, or resonator, and then the final hose there. Get those in. But you know all this because uh, you've been watching me all along. So, 
yeah, it's coming together. It's getting exciting. Hey, I got it all back together. I put it back the best way that I can. It seemed to go all right, seemed to go good. Um, now it's time to pray. Cross your fingers, cross your toes. Help me out. I need some luck. Make sure this thing is working and not leaking through the gasket. I don't. I've done everything I can humanly do to make sure I do a good job on this. I've even prayed and I've prayed a lot. So hopefully this starts up and we're all good. I'll go start up. Stay tuned.